Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I was downtown one night not too long ago, and I almost had an encounter with these two tough guys that were in a fight. And that made me realize that I need to toughen up too. But I can't go to the gym because I spent all my money on alcohol, so I need to come up with some other way to toughen up. No Wheaties allowed is the episode where Sparta wants to get into the salty spittoon, but is rejected because he isn't tough enough, so he tries many ways to get in. This episode aired on March 15, 2002, and is the episode that debuts the iconic location in the series, the Salty Spittoon. This would be its only appearance in the show for forever, and wouldn't appear again until over 20 years later with episode 536, Salty Sponge from season 13. And despite that, everybody remembers this location, even though we never see the inside of it until its second appearance. It also reveals Weenie Hut Juniors and Super Weenie Hut Juniors, and those have actually been seen in future episodes of this show. Not Weenie Hut General, though. Most notably, Super Weenie Hut Juniors appeared in episode 247, Stuck in the Ringer from season 7, and 527, Captain Pipsqueak from season 13. While this episode is known by many people for multiple elements, I mostly remember the locations, and that was what I talked about often with friends. But nowadays, I feel I've changed my perception a bit. So let's watch this episode and see if we can find out why the Salty Spittoon was brought back in Season 13. So the episode starts up, and Spongebob and Sandy are at Goo Lagoon. But Spongebob is still wearing his clothes and not a swimsuit. So Spongebob goes into a changing tent to change, but he actually brought his karate gear and he plans to surprise Sandy with that. But right before he karate chopped her, Sandy showed that she brought her gear too. Well, he was screaming very loudly inside the changing tent, so I think that kind of gave away the element of surprise. Sandy hit Spongebob so hard that he landed in a family's potato salad. He tried to attack her again, but Sandy ambushed him and sent him flying up to the surface. Back in Texas, we call ice cream frozen cow juice. Is that because everything's bigger in Texas? Sandy sent Spongebob flying again, and he hit a muscular guy at the back of the head while he was waiting in line. Sandy came up, and the guy said the line was for the Salty Spittoon, a club that only the toughest people under the sea can get into. Spongebob and Sandy decided to go in themselves. The tough fish told Reg the bouncer that he had a bowl of nails for breakfast without milk, so he got to go in. Sandy ripped off Reg's tattoo and put it back on upside down. Wasn't Spongebob in front of Sandy before? Sandy was allowed in, and Spongebob tried to prove that he was tough enough by opening a new bottle of ketchup, but he couldn't open it no matter how hard he tried. Reg said the salty spittoon was too tough for Spongebob, which offended him. Even more so when Reg suggested Weenie Hut Juniors and or Super Weenie Hut Juniors. So Spongebob went to Weenie Hut Juniors, and he overheard some nerds talking about their comic book collection, and thought they were weenies. Ah, so having a collection automatically makes you a weenie now. The robot server- Wait, robot server? In 2002? Oh no. Anyway, the robot server calls Spongebob a weenie, which really set Spongebob off. He demanded to go into the salty spittoon, but was turned away pretty quickly again, this time only after learning Reg's name. The nerd suggested Spongebob getting a tough hairdo, and while they were arguing over bald and shaved, Spongebob left to go buy a wig. Outside the Salty Spittoon, a drifter that looks like Spongebob arrives, but Reg thought the drifter was Spongebob until the real Spongebob showed up with a clown wig. The drifter was let in, but Reg recognized Spongebob with the wig on. Another tough guy showed up with a tattoo that he can wiggle. Spongebob tried being a tattoo, but Reg recognized him there and ripped him off. And that's why I never got a tattoo in college. He let the tough guy in and threw Spongebob away. Two more muscular guys got in a fight, and Spongebob got caught in the middle of it. Reg let the two tough guys in, but not Spongebob since he was running away. Spongebob tried to take it up a notch himself, but ended up cracking his fingers and ran away crying. Later, he soothed his hurt fingers in a Sunday when the robot server showed up again. That robot wasn't supposed to happen in an episode from 2002! Why did it happen?! 
SpongeBob was disappointed to find out that Patrick comes to Weenie Hut Juniors. While Patrick and the nerds talked about special days and deals at both Weenie Hut Juniors and Super Weenie Hut Juniors, SpongeBob planned to pick a fight with a muscular stranger. Patrick was worried for SpongeBob, but soon they decided to fake a fight with Patrick himself, and SpongeBob agreed. When he talked to Reg again, SpongeBob got mad and said he wanted to beat somebody up to take out his anger. SpongeBob and Patrick started sassing each other until Patrick got mad by being called Tubby. He gave SpongeBob a black eye, and then he started beating himself up as if somebody invisible was attacking him. Reg was shocked that SpongeBob beat up Patrick without touching him, and finally let him inside. SpongeBob was overjoyed, but he was soon sent to the hospital because he slipped on an ice cube. At the hospital, upon hearing the situation, the doctor decided to send them to Weenie Hut General, and the episode ends. Isn't it illegal for a doctor to not treat somebody who's sick and or injured? So that was No Weenies Allowed, and that, in my opinion, is a pretty solid episode. Let's talk about the locations real quick. Weenie Hut Juniors. The name is iconic, and I wonder what the food would be like there. Quick side note, but these guys do make me ponder. Back in the day, things like comics and video games would classify you as a nerd in school. But now that cosplaying is somehow being more common when it's not Halloween, what would be classified as something nerdy in today's day and age? And speaking of today's day and age, why did they have to have this robot be the server here? I never understood that, even as a kid. Even if it was just for this scene of the sensors indicating that Spongebob was a weenie, I think that could have been done by a smart nerdy waiter who just so happens to have a scanner on him or something. And watching this in the current year... Anything artificial intelligent related these days? Go f*** yourself. If you robots even know how to do that like we actual human beings do... Sorry, I just need to get that out of my system. The Salty Spittoon is pretty cool. Since it only lets tough people inside, I wonder if Spongebob would have been let in if Reg saw him and Sandy doing karate together. Back in the day, everybody wondered why we didn't see it, because Spongebob worked so hard to get in only to be sent to the hospital in the very next shot. Again, Salty Sponge will show the inside, but that's not for another 10 seasons. And since we don't get to see the inside, all I can do is talk about Super Weenie Hut Juniors. Super Weenie Hut Juniors is cool, but we also don't get to see the inside of that in this episode. But we actually do see the inside of it in Stuck in the Ringer, which is only 4 seasons from now instead of 10. The name Weenie Hut General is also pretty funny, as well as Spongebob's reaction to it. I remember as a kid, whenever my friends and I talked about this episode, most of what we ever talked about were those three locations and Spongebob's reactions to being sent there after getting rejected from the Salty Spittoon or the hospital. I do like all the tough characters in this episode. The guy who calls Reg by his name and walks inside immediately, the one with the ink tattoo, the one with the muscles on his eyeballs, and of course, everybody's favorites, the ones who don't call each other for dinner. That fight was always funny to me. I also like Spongebob's reaction to seeing this pink guy appear out of nowhere. Spongebob and Sandy doing karate at the beginning is always fun to watch. As a kid, I was disappointed that we didn't get to see more of it. I think the first time I saw it, I missed the title cards, so I didn't know what this episode would be about and was confused why Sandy left the story so quickly and wasn't shown again till the end. When I finally learned the title, I understood why Sandy wasn't shown as much, but it's still kind of disappointing because this is only her second appearance in season 3 so far. In terms of other funny parts, the standout scene was by far the part where Patrick beats himself up. I remember that for sure, but my favorite scenes were the aforementioned two guys who lie about dinner, and the part where Spongebob pretends to be a tattoo on this green guy. I love how pissed Tom is over Spongebob's feet in their potato salad that took them three days to make. The two nerds with their debates are humorous, as well as all their back and forth with Patrick in the third act of the episode. Fun fact, these two guys are voiced by Paul Tibbet and Kent Osborne, two of the writers of this episode. Now as a nitpick to point out, in this episode, Spongebob does feel pain here, while in episode 86, the bully from this same season showed him absorbing the impact because he's a sponge. I never even thought about that when I was a kid. Hell, I didn't even think about that during this latest rewatch. It was only after I had dinner right after watching it when that thought came to me. But of course, if that was brought up every time Spongebob needed to prove something, then nothing would be able to work at all in the show. 
and it would be pretty cheap to always fall back on that excuse anyway. So like I said, just ignore that. But speaking of Spongebob, I do like that Spongebob wants to prove that he can be tough too. Of course it's so he can go inside and spend more time with Sandy, but it's still nice that he's standing up for himself in some way when he's being called a weenie and not just taking it. It's better than these days where he doesn't show many emotions aside from happiness and sadness, that's for sure. I didn't dislike this episode as a kid, far from it. I guess I was just disappointed by not seeing the inside of the salty spittoon, but that was all I could think of for negatives as a kid. To me, there were slightly less funnies in this episode compared to others from this season, and I think aside from the new locations and Patrick beating himself up, that's all I really remembered as a kid. As a teenager, I grew to like a lot more scenes, and nowadays, I really like this episode for a lot more than what I thought as a kid. I don't consider it groundbreaking, but still a really good episode regardless. I like all the funny scenes and characters I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of great sequences throughout the episode, and seeing Spongebob try and prove that he's not a complete wimp is pretty satisfying to me, even if the results aren't quite what he expected. Probably explains why he was nervous about going back to the Salty Spittoon in Season 13. But to go back to what I said earlier, why the Salty Spittoon was brought back in Season 13. It's because the writers can't help but reference the old shit and are being stretched as thin as possible these days. No Ease Allowed is a solid episode all around. There is quite a lot to love with this one, and the names of the locations are iconic enough to stick with fans even after all these years. I've grown to really like this one over time, but I gotta dock points for the robot server in 2002. I'm sorry. But that reminds me. I think to prove how tough I am, I'm finally going to get a tattoo for the first time. One tattoo session later. Yeah, I think next time I'll just stick with a bowl of nails. Now I gotta wait for this ink to wash off. And my local 5 star restaurant won't let me inside until the ink is gone. Schooly and Fancy Son. He exists. He previously debuted in episode 70, Band Geeks from season 2, and has made a few sparse appearances since, and seems to have completely faded into obscurity these days. But he's still a good character, so we might as well cherish all his appearances while we can. Squilliam Returns is the episode where Squidward lies to Squilliam saying he owns a 5 star restaurant to impress him and prove that he could be successful too, and tries to pull off the facade. Like No Weenies Allowed, this episode aired on March 15, 2002, and as the title implies, is the second appearance of Squilliam Fancy Son in the series. What a shocker. Had the show not continued after the SpongeBob SquarePants movie in 2004, this would have been Squilliam's final appearance in the series. This episode also mentions Mr. Krabs' old Navy days by saying he worked on ships like the SS Gourmet and SS Diarrhea. The Navy days were implied in the past, such as in episode 75, Sailor Mouth from season 2, where he says sailors have 13 bad words instead of 7, but this is one of, if not the first time, where a major part of his Navy days were mentioned at all, like the ships he worked on and what his position was, and his history with the Navy would go on to be expanded on much more in later seasons. So that's definitely a fun piece of trivia about Mr. Krabs that's revealed here, and that's always welcome. But how well does this episode hold up otherwise? Well, let's rewatch this episode and see Squilliam for the second time again. So the episode starts up and Squidward is allowed to leave for his lunch break. But he sees Squilliam Fancy Son and doesn't want him to know what he's been doing lately. Squilliam says that he's been successful in pretty much everything lately. Anyone can be a big shot in a hick town like Bikini Bottom. So Squilliam wants to know what Squidward's been up to recently. He said anybody, not everybody. Squidward hastily said he owned a 5 star restaurant despite telling himself not to lie. Squilliam was impressed, but he wanted to see Squidward's restaurant that night and bring all his friends, which Squidward wasn't all too thrilled about to say the least. He tried talking to Mr. Krabs to help him, but he at first just played a sad song on the world's smallest violin. As somebody who used to play the violin in school, the teachers never taught me how to do that. Mr. Krabs did agree to help Squidward after he mentioned Squilliam. Squidward later talked to Spongebob and Mr. Krabs about his plans, and Patrick showed up thinking Squidward was organizing the corpse now. Out of everything he could do to straighten out his life, he chooses something that puts his life in danger. Squidward asks Patrick to take people's hats, and he agrees. Squidward has Mr. Krabs be the chef due to his history on a gourmet navy ship, and Spongebob be the waiter, and has the latter read a book on how to become a fancy waiter in less than 20 minutes. 
Squidward thought he could pull it off, but Patrick starts beating the shit out of a hat rack and Mr. Krabs cooked the peas and an appetizer poorly, saying he was actually the cook on a diarrhea navy ship and not gourmet. Spongebob was too stressed about being the waiter because there was way too much for him to remember at all. Squidward asks Spongebob to calm down and empty his mind with everything that doesn't have to do with fine dining and breathing. So the camera zooms in and the clever visual metaphor used to personify the abstract concept of thought, aka multiple Spongebobs inside Spongebob's head, did just that, very hastily until Spongebob was just... Squidward tried to stall Squilliam, but it was too late, as he had already arrived. But Squilliam went inside and the Krusty Krab had been completely transformed into a 5 star restaurant, much to everybody's shock. Spongebob came out to seat everybody and told Squidward that he tied up Patrick and Mr. Krabs. He sat everybody down and pampered Squilliam, and he was quite impressed by everything. Squidward was thankful for everything Spongebob has done, and amazed that he was able to pull off the plan at all. He rubbed it in Squilliam's face and makes him admit to everybody that he doesn't suck eggs as he was voted in high school. In high school, I was voted most likely to own a Krabby Patty DNA poster as of 2024. Squilliam was impressed by Spongebob above all else. He wanted to know Spongebob's name, but Spongebob couldn't remember. Turns out the brain Spongebob upkeepers threw out the name and chaos insurers, both inside and outside of Spongebob, with him scaring the customers. And everybody runs away when the appetizer came to life. Why didn't they run away before the appetizer came out of the kitchen? And Squidward's true uniform was revealed, including a name tag that was never seen in the show prior. Squidward admitted how he was just trying to impress Squilliam and he was just a cashier. Squilliam claimed that he made up all of his wealth and expensive possessions just to impress Squidward and said that he was a cashier too, but soon said he was lying and that he really was rich and walked away with all of his friends. Squidward was left in misery and Mr. Krabs played the world's smallest violin again so Squidward told him to stop and the episode ends. So that was Squilliam Returns and that's a good episode. While Mr. Krabs' Navy history was kind of glossed over, I do like that this gives some insight to it before we know more about it in later seasons. Patrick is pretty funny, his giant pupils are great, as well as his thinking that Squidward was a Navy general for some reason, and my favorite gag in this episode is of him and Mr. Krabs tied up. Spongebob is great in here too. I like when he gets stressed over becoming a waiter and when he goes crazy when his brain cracks. My favorite line from him in this one is definitely the part where he pours soup in some guy's armpits. And of course, I love the visualization of Spongebob's brain and thought process being run by all the mini Spongebob's. In addition to the gag of Patrick and Mr. Krabs tied up, I also like the scene with the appetizer and when everybody becomes Hamana over the site of the 5 star restaurant. The visual of Squilliam in his underwear is funny, but in terms of why Squidward saw him like that, I will say Squidward is more normal than most people these days. What a shocker. I also like the briefly shown live action background of the crowd cheering for Squidward. Mr. Krabs is also a notable highlight. While he does mock Squidward at first, I love that he does agree to help Squidward execute his plan upon hearing that he was doing this whole thing to impress Squilliam. That's something where, again, Mr. Krabs probably wouldn't agree to help Squidward do anything in something like season 13 or 14. Sure, he doesn't exactly perform as expected and there was a misinterpretation, but at least he agreed to help at all. Guess maybe he's making it up after their feud over his first dime in episode 94, Can You Spare a Dime, huh? Squidward is also really good in this episode too. I really like how he's thankful for Spongebob for helping him with this scheme and pulling it off so well. It's good the rivalry with Squilliam is still alive, that probably wouldn't change at all of course, but it's still good continuity since Squilliam doesn't appear a lot. Previously I mentioned it'd be cool to learn about why the two of them are rivals in the first place, but something else that would be cool would be if they made an episode where the two of them put their past behind them and become friends after all those years. Now I've heard some people dislike this episode because they said nothing good happens for Squidward at all and he still should have had a happier ending like in Band Geeks. Well first, Mr. Krabs agreed to help Squidward out. If nothing good happened at all, nobody would have agreed to help Squidward and the whole thing would have been disastrous from the start and throughout, not just the end of the story. I do agree the ending isn't the best, but to an extent he did still have this coming. 
Obviously, lying to make yourself seem better will bite you in the butt somehow, but even if he did pull this off successfully, it probably would come back somehow because he still rubbed it in Squilliam's face when the plan was going very well, instead of being humble. Ignoring Squilliam's comments altogether is harder to do, but it is something a bigger person can do. Squilliam is not the bigger person since he teases Squidward, but Squidward isn't any better. This is also different from Band Geeks because Squilliam claimed he couldn't show up to the Bubble Bowl with his band, but he was shown outside the stage because he wanted to watch Squidward blow his chance anyway, despite saying he couldn't make it at the beginning. So while Squidward claimed he had a band and hastily drummed one up, Squilliam was the villain by basically setting up Squidward for failure. So while Squidward's insecurities get the better of him here, he'd probably still not win, so the episode doesn't teach kids it's okay to lie about something like that. But I do agree it wasn't really necessary for Squilliam to make his ending monologue and rub his success in Squidward's face. Unless that actually was the truth, and all his money was inherited or something. And besides, almost every story that features a cover-up or facade in some way ends with the cover-up being exposed. So I do think this one is better than some others do, but I wouldn't say it's the star of the season either. Also, in retrospective, the title is a little perplexing. This episode also could have been the title of something like Episode 197, House Fancy from Season 6, or 252, Keep Bikini Bottom Beautiful from Season 7, because Squilliam returns in both of them and Squidward tries to outdo Squilliam in some way. But I will say this is the most fitting of that title compared to the other two, since those two have more to them than the fact that Squilliam comes back. And I also question why Spongebob didn't remember his name despite the fact that Squidward did say his name at one point after the restaurant became 5 star. But those are my only points of criticism. This is still a solid episode overall. While I won't deny there could have been a better ending, I still think most of the events play out well. Emphasis on most. There are still some really funny scenes and great showcases of all the characters at play. So I'd say it's not too bad, especially considering what comes later. But better yet, this episode doesn't include a robot server. Squilliam Returns is a good episode. I don't think it's necessarily worth screaming about, but it's still fine regardless, especially since there's a lot of funny moments throughout. And until I can go back inside my local 5 star restaurant, I'll just claim that I won't go in at all because I don't want to eat food that costs more than $6. Don't lie and make things worse. Don't lie and make things worse. Don't lie and make things worse. Damn it, my mind stops me from doing all the fun.